Welcome to the last part of the Blood Vessel Lab videos, the new revised Blood Vessel Lab videos. Um, we're going to finish up with hepatic portal circulation and fetal circulation because these are both kind of specialized circulations that are different from everything else. So hepatic portal circulation um, is a special circulation that occurs in the abdomen, uh, mostly with the GI organs. Um, and portal circulation has a different flow of vessels. We'll see portal circulation occurs in the brain as well, between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Um, but here we're talking about it occurring between the abdominal organs and the liver. So normally, when we talk about blood vessels, we go from arteries to capillaries to veins. And then over again, right? Arteries, capillaries, veins. Portal circulation is different. Portal circulation, we have arteries, and they bring blood to capillaries. Remember, capillaries are important because that's where we have exchange, right? That's where stuff can enter and leave the bloodstream. From the capillaries, we go to our portal veins. And after the portal veins, we go to another set of capillaries. Then normal veins. That's weird. Look, we have a capillary bed interconnected with another capillary bed. And the portal veins just connect them to each other. So portal circulation connects two capillary beds to each other. Again, this is weird. This is not the way blood normally flows. So why do we do this? Remember that capillaries are the only place where things can enter and leave the bloodstream, right? Nothing enters and leaves from an artery or vein. So let's look at where these capillary beds are. These initial capillary beds are found in areas like the stomach, the spleen, and the intestines. The spleen, that's where we clean out like all the worn out red blood cells. Remember we break the hemoglobin down, we get all that nasty bilirubin that we need to clean out of the blood, right? So we get all that, those wastes and all that stuff in the, into the blood via the is capillaries, the spleen. The stomach, the intestines, like the GI tract, that's where we absorb a bunch of nutrients. So we have tons of sugar and amino acids and fatty acids and vitamins and electrolytes and minerals, all this stuff gets absorbed into these capillaries and the intestines. So essentially what we have in this blood that's coming from the first capillary bed is blood with a ton of stuff. And a lot of that stuff's good. A lot of it we are gonna store and use, it's nutrients. But that blood has way too much stuff for general circulation. We cannot use all of those nutrients right now. We need to store them until later. And we utilize the liver to do that, right? Remember the liver converts um, glucose into glycogen and then we store glycogen in the liver. The liver makes plasma proteins. So we utilize all these amino acids to make plasma proteins in the liver. Um, from the spleen, we picked up all the wastes, right? The bilirubin, what cleans it out? The liver. So we need to get this blood that's got a bunch of junk in it and get this blood over to the liver. So the portal veins do that. The portal veins collect the blood from all these areas, the spleen, the stomach, the intestines, and they shuttle that blood over to the second capillary bed, which is in the liver. That's where we process all the stuff. We essentially clean out the blood, we store the extra nutrients, whatever, and then the blood leaves the liver in regular veins that just go back up to the inferior vena cava, up to the heart, regular circulation, because we process all the extra stuff. Okay, so that's the point of portal circulation. Now let's look at the actual vessels. The portal vessels um, are typically identified on models by like a different color. They're frequently this kind of a like purpley color or kind of a mauve color. Let's see if I can zoom in. They're kind of a purple or mauve color to show you that the vessels are different, right? They're not normal oxygenated blood. They're not um, deoxygenated blood. So any of these purple vessels that you see, like right here, here, these are all showing you portal vessels. So they all end up flowing to the liver. This big brown thing is the liver. 
So the purple vessel right here that's leading into the liver, that's the hepatic portal vein. So you actually have multiple vessels going into the liver and then out. The purple one's the hepatic portal vein that's bringing that nutrient-rich blood in. These red ones are just regular hepatic arteries bringing blood in. And then these blue vessels are the hepatic veins bringing the blood out. So purple, this is the hepatic portal vein. Going into the hepatic portal vein, this one appears the gastric vein. We actually have a left and right, but they wrap around the stomach. And then we have these two big branches. This first branch that's coming down like this is the superior mesenteric vein, comes to the top, top of the intestines. And then this coming all the way over here to the spleen is the splenic vein. The splenic vein has a branch that comes off right here. So this is the very beginning of the inferior mesenteric vein that's gonna to go to the bottom of the intestines. Okay, so hepatic portal, gastric, superior mesenteric, splenic, inferior mesenteric. We can also see these pretty well on the back of this model. This model is something that we'll use when we do GI. Um, this actually, what it is, is it sits in your body like this. Um, this is the spleen. This is your pancreas. This is the very beginning of your intestine wrapping around your pancreas. The stomach sits on top right here and your liver would be up here. So the liver is right here. If you see this purple vessel that's coming up, that purple vessel is coming into the liver. So that one is the hepatic portal vein. Let me flip it so you can see them well on the back. So you can see this is showing you the hepatic portal vein. Remember the hepatic portal vein has a couple main branches. This one stretches out towards the spleen. So this is the splenic vein. We said that the splenic vein has a branch and that is the inferior mesenteric vein. And then the other huge vessel that goes into the hepatic portal is the superior mesenteric. So the superior mesenteric just starts right here. So this is the hepatic portal and it branches. The superior mesenteric goes down, the splenic goes out towards the spleen. And actually if I turn this around, you can see right here where the superior mesenteric is continuing to go down and it's already going to the intestines. So that's hepatic portal circulation. Another area where circulation is a little bit different is in the fetus. So there are four things that you guys, for me at least, should be able to identify for fetal circulation. Two of these I'll ask you verbally, so you should know the definitions. Two of them I can actually point out on the heart because they're like leftover scars that are on the adult heart. So in the fetus, you guys should know the definition of the foramen ovale, and that's a hole between the right atrium and the left atrium. You guys should also know the definition of the ductus arteriosus, and that is a um, like a connection between like a vessel or a duct that connects the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Again, this is in a fetus. Why, right? Why? A fetus does not oxygenate, right? The fetus is living in water. The uterus is filled up with water. Um, so the fetus does not breathe. It doesn't oxygenate its own blood. The mom sends oxygenated blood to the placenta. Then that uh, oxygenated blood travels through the umbilical cord, right, through the umbilical vessels and goes to the baby. The baby does not have to breathe to oxygenate its own blood. So there's no point in pulmonary circulation, right? When the blood goes into the right side of the heart, we have no reason to bring it down to the right ventricle, pump it out through the pulmonary trunk and send it to the lungs. It already has oxygen. So we just want it to jump from the right side over to the left side so we can send it out through the aorta into the body. 
we've got two bypasses that we do that. The first is the four middle ballet. So that's a hole, there's a hole like right here in between the right atrium and left atrium. So the blood that comes into the right atrium can just jump right over to the left side to go to systemic circulation. Now, not all the blood makes it through. Some actually goes down to the right ventricle. So that's where the second bypass comes in, the ductus arteriosus. The ductus arteriosus is a little um, like duct or a little connection that goes from the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. So there's another connection here. So whatever blood actually makes it down to the right ventricle and gets pumped out through the pulmonary trunk will go through the ductus arteriosus up into the aorta and then get sent out to systemic circulation. Now, once the baby's born, um, these should close up. They should not be open in an adult because an adult does need to breathe and does need to oxygenate their own blood. So these close, but we do see little scars um, or little kind of leftover areas on the heart where we can identify where these used to be. And these are what I will ask you to identify on the actual models. So the foramen ovale becomes the fossa ovalis. Think of it like a fossil, right? It's old, left over. So the old leftover scar from the foramen ovale is called the fossa ovalis. So in the adult heart, if I open this, this is the atria, right? This is the other one. If I open them up and you can look in between them, so like right there, that little hole, and if I turn it, you can see the side of it. Those holes are where the foramen ovale used to be, right? So that closes when the baby's breathe, when the baby needs to breathe its own um, air and oxygenate itself so that the blood does not cross between the atria. But we're still left with this little hole, this little, or kind of depression rather, this little scar. That's the fossa ovalis. The ductus arteriosus, um, the vessel or the duct that connects the pulmonary trunk and aorta shrivels up, tightens up, and it becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay, like the, yeah, like a ligament between the arteries. Ligamentum arteriosum. Um, and I apologize, it's not actually shown on this model. Very rarely you'll see it shown on models, but what you'll see is right in between, right in between, like right here, between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, you'll see like a little white connector. You can kind of see a really thin line in here. See that white line? That's where the ligamentum arteriosum is. It's shown as like an actual thick white tube in some models. Um, but it's really difficult to see on these ones. You can kind of see that white right there. That's showing you the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay, please post if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, and as we go, I'll start to redo some of these original lab videos that were a little rough in the beginning. So let me know if you have any suggestions or requests or recommendations, and I'll try and get those in. Okay? All right, good luck.